Good morning. How are we doing? Busy morning of session so far. Marlborough advises Chippenham, cardio and core, muscle strength, focus, um, full body workouts, as well as arms, focus, all about posture today and bring those shoulders back. Real nice one, low impact um, going on there. So I wanted to touch on today. So how much weight should I lose? Like what's realistic? How much weight should I lose? And you know, what's I'm asking you, Matt. That was a question I had yesterday. Like, I was like, how much do you want to lose? Or like, I want to lose weight. I don't really know. Like, how much is realistic? How much can I lose? It's a really good question. And the second part of this is, as the conversation went on, is she's tried a lot of things before, you know, best intentions, the plan's there, but she's worried she can't stick to it again. Because every time she starts something new and new and new, morning, Jane, start something new, start something new, start something new, and I fail. And there's that fear of keeping up to it. Now, I want to touch on this. So the first part of this, is how much weight should I lose? Well, it really depends on your goals and what you want to achieve. But as we say in our um, Kickstart book on here, which I'll just show you here, in the, the first 5% is very clinically significant. So I'm just gonna turn my screen around for you. So as you see on here, you don't have to lose loads of weight to see the benefits. Losing just 5% of your starting weight lowers your cholesterol, reduces your risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and may even improve your sleep and energy levels. In our research, people who focus on simply losing the next 5% succeeded in 97% of the cases. People who focus on losing more only succeeded 40% of the time. So what's that saying? Well, it's saying that let's not focus about years ahead because sometimes when our brain, when we ask the question, what, oh, I, I, I want to lose like five stone or six stone, that might be 5%, who knows? Um, but you know, when we focus on the end goal all the time, that's fine. But when we're doing it all the time, we go into this stage in your brain, you're asking the question, would I stick to it? I didn't stick to it before. So how can I do it now? Let's focus on that next 5%. Or well, let's focus on where we're at 5%. Or maybe we look at 12 weeks from now, we look at eight weeks from now. Then we can ask the question, how are you feeling then? But how are you feeling with everything? Are you finding it hard? Are you finding it easy? Because there's a lot to be said for that. And this is things that like, you know, we just don't consider when we're on a cookie cutter any diet or anything like that because you have to just sometimes stop and reflect and go how am I feeling because if you're finding it quite easy and you're losing like half a pound here and there and you're enjoying the exercise why, why would you really want to go faster than that because this is a key thing if you're finding it okay you're not missing out on anything whereas if you're like oh, I'm losing four pounds a week but I'm hating every second of it We've got a problem that we're going to need to address at some point. And, and that's fine, by the way. There's a time and a place for all of this. Um, it's fine to go in harder, but it's how we manage that. Because then if it means that, okay, you know, if you keep stopping, if you're like really strong, oh, why am I, why do I keep binge eating? Why do I keep messing up? I keep messing up. Sometimes it's a case of, you know, we need to accept that this is going to be difficult and we're going to have to make changes and there's going to be some struggle in this. And we have to accept that sometimes and take responsibility. That's a big part of it. But at the same time, if this has happened for years and years and years and years, like, you know, we've been on off dieting, you know, when I say, what have you tried before? They're like, well, how long have you got? You know, I've tried everything for the last 15 years, 10 years, whatever. And if that's always the case, that whether that's a certain time of the month, we know from research that, um, you know, women can burn up to 200 calories more a day. Um, or even 300 calories a day in certain weeks of the menstrual cycle. So if you think about luteal phase, for example, and in that, that kind of means that you can eat a bit more in that month. Not loads more, not bingy, but like you might say, you know, if I allow myself 200 extra calories a day in these in these weeks, and you know, just to translate that, if you don't want to count calories, a few pieces of fruit, a small chocolate bar, whatever, it's like something like that, even if it's a chocolate bar, it's thinking about, you know, can I take the pressure off in those weeks? And it might not be linked to menstrual cycle or anything like that. It might just be like, you know, every time you do something, every time it's like week four, you get a bit like bored or something. And every time then you think, ah, oh, I'm all or nothing person. So on week four, I've messed up. I might as well just call it a day and start again next month or something when summer's end ended in September when, it, when the kids go back to school, whatever it is. Isn't it funny that even when kids have flown the nest or or whether we don't even have kids, like September just seems to be like a, you know, it's like almost because we've always started school in September. We're like, yep, September, I need to start again. January is a new year. January and September seem to have quite interesting um, psychology around our starting point. And then we think, you know, we might as well start then. What if we get away with that though? What if we can get away from that and actually just go, you know what, actually I'm just gonna maybe 
just take a step back for that week. And I don't mean just not do anything, but have a bit of a break. And you might think that, yeah, I can't do that. I won't lose weight if I don't do X, Y, Z. But if you keep like messing up, keep stopping on that week every time, if that's the sticking point, like oh, every four weeks, I just I just fall off the wagon then, or whenever we have this weekend like planned or whatever, I just fall off the wagon completely. Maybe we try not to stick to it 100% and we lower our expectations. Maybe we stick to it 70% or 50% and we'd be okay with that. Because actually, if you can stay on it 50%, Maybe that's progress rather than going 100 to 0% then going sod this for the next two weeks. Rather, for this weekend, I'm going to be 50% on it or so, and I'm okay with that. Then we can keep that consistency going. And I know I'm going to shorten the gap between beating myself up and getting straight back to it again. Okay? So that's going to be the key thing. Can we shorten that gap on there? So I hope that helps. Um, any questions, as always, just let me know. And I will see you soon.